Number 10. I need to kill Austin. Ashley, I really did it. I didn't mean to hurt him. That was 17 year old Dylan Shymaker, who fatally beat his girlfriend's 23 month old son. I mean, is this real life right now? I watched videos about this kid's case, and his lawyers were trying to justify that Dylan has an anger problem. He didn't mean to kill the 23 month old baby, he didn't know how to control himself. I'm not sure why there are lawyers defending people like this, you know, defending killers. That little baby didn't have a chance at life. What is his lawyers thinking? What are they fighting? for but there were other dynamics at work there including my clients inability to either control his anger or frustration and his inexperience in babysitting so this took place in Buffalo in the States and jurors convicted Dylan of second degree murder. The judge sentenced him to 15 years to life in prison, which is the maximum punishment in Buffalo. Moving into number 9, we have this girl who freaked out after she was given a life sentence. She was hyperventilating like... <gasps> So just before the panic attacks were happening, this girl fell to the ground and she started yelling in the courtroom. The woman's family was also freaking out. All right, number eight. I know it's hard to understand what this kid is saying, but he's begging for forgiveness. It's a hard video to watch. I know people make mistakes, but killing someone isn't something that society can forgive, or can they? John, is there anything you want to say before sentencing? Well, that was 17 year old John Freeman who was saying sorry to the victim's family after he strangled a five year old girl to death. I mean, in that moment, was he really sorry? This also took place near Buffalo and he was given 25 years to life. And this is for a second degree murder in which John Freeman pleaded guilty to. So when John turns 42 years old, a judge will determine whether or not John is a danger to himself or to society and if he's going to be released. Hopefully, if he is released, he's a changed person. There are also many people who have served a number of years to life who just don't get released from prison because they're just always deemed as a danger to society. So although you get like 15 years to life, you can serve like 50 years. All right, moving into number seven, we have this. You couldn't see the guy I'm talking about during this part of the video, but who you're about to see is 19 year old Dexter Johnson, who is 19 years old at the time, so he raged out in court when he was given the death sentence. I guess he has nothing else to lose. This is what this guy looks like. Punishment of death. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is going to complete your jury service. I'm going to meet you in the jury room. The jurors convicted Dexter Johnson of capital murder. Dexter was involved in a carjacking, robbery, rape, and murder of 23 year old Maria Aparis. Dexter is now 28 years old and he's still on death row. And right now he does not have an execution date. Although someone is given the death penalty, it takes a very long time to go through the whole process. Do you guys believe in the death penalty? Sound off in the comment section. At number six, we now have teenager Samantha Grigg, who was charged for murdering a Michigan State University student, Dustin Frolka. Grigg pleaded guilty to unarmed robbery and manslaughter in Frolka's death. The 19 year old's body was found along I 69 last February. He had been beaten with brass knuckles, robbed. This case just doesn't seem to make sense to me. 16 year old Samantha at the time decided to plan a kidnapping to rob and kill Frolka. I mean, she's 16. How do you have these thoughts? She had someone help her as well, and that was 18 year old Tyrell Bredernitz. So, the reason why this doesn't make sense because it does seem like Samantha had a really bright future. She threw it all away. She was actually a lead singer of her band and she was actually quite good singer in a band number five we have this teenager who after given his sentencing turned around and just attacks the people in the first row I think it was the victim's family no, your honor. Nothing, thank you. 
Yeah, luckily the police was right there to get on top of the situation, you know, to get, you know, to handle the situation before anyone got hurt. All right, number four. You can't, you know, they understand the, the seriousness of the crime. Barbeau will almost certainly start his prison sentence at the Department of Corrections, Lincoln Hills School for Boys, north of Wausau. That was 15 year old Antonio Barbeau at the time of his trial. This one is pretty messed up, but he was given a life sentence for killing his great grandmother back in 2012. He was just 13 years old. Antonio and his friend killed his great grandmother with a hatchet and a hammer. The great grandmother was 78 years old, and this is just so sickening. Antonio won't be legible for release until he's 50 years old. The article I was reading about this stated that Antonio's lawyers said the punishment punishment was cruel and unusual. I mean, are they freaking kidding me? There's no way that the lawyer actually said this in court. How does that lawyer even sleep at night trying to get this killer out to the public sooner? The reason why Antonio killed his great grandmother was for money. It's just, it's so sickening. I think the punishment wasn't cruel enough, but that's just my opinion. Moving into number three, we have an 18 year old who was sentenced to 20 years in state prison for using a dating app to set up a robbery that resulted in a shootout. In the footage I'm about to play for you guys, I really feel bad for this mother who is just so hurt. Once she finds out her daughter was charged and sentenced to 20 years in prison, she totally loses it. She freaks out and then the teenager starts to freak out as well. This one is really sad. Watch. 20 years <laughs> 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 The teenager was then quickly taken out of the courtroom by police officers and the mother was just left there to cry. She was so heartbroken and I would be as well if I found out that my kid committed a robbery and guns were used and then they were sentenced to 20 years in prison. It's like you lost them. I'm not sure if she is even able to get out of prison sooner, but she did use a deadly weapon during this robbery that could have resulted in someone losing their life. Do you guys think that 20 years was, you know, maybe too harsh of a punishment for for this crime. All right, number two. Saying to pull the trigger to kill your son, you know, masturbates to memory. All of you. Sentencing Lane to life in prison, Judge David Fury said he lacked remorse and had feigned mental illness. So this guy might look familiar to you guys. And to be honest with you, I don't care if this guy gets left in prison and forgotten about for the rest of his life. So who you just saw was TJ Lane, the teenager who was in front of a judge for sentencing for a school shooting in Ohio back in 2012. TJ was 17 years old when he shot and killed three students and injured another three. Although TJ was a minor at the time of the attack during the sentencing, he was tried as an adult and he was given three life sentences in prison without parole. Well, just a few years after the attack, TJ, he was actually able to escape prison. This was just eight days before his birthday and he escaped from Allen Correctional Institution in Ohio along with two other inmates. He was able to escape using a makeshift ladder. They used it to scale down a fence during recreation hours. One of the men was quickly recaptured, but TJ and another man who was serving a 12 year sentence for aggravated robbery and burglary and kidnapping remained at large. Police conducted a nationwide search and told nearby residents to lock their doors. Eventually both men were captured and TJ was then put into a small cell for 23 hours a day and he stayed there until he awaited for his transfer to a maximum security prison. A prison where hopefully you can't make a makeshift ladder and escape again. And finally at number one we have this scary freak out from a California teenager who was begging to not go to prison. That was 18 year old Fernando Elgato who was accused of rape. He denies all claims and he was freaking out when he was being sentenced because he was actually afraid of going back to prison. For some reason he thought that if he fought back he would somehow be released. Scared of returning to jail, 18 year old. I feel really bad for this kid because if he actually didn't do it, he just appeared in front of a judge, he got sentenced, and now he's going back to prison where I don't really know what happens there. I can only imagine. 
So I would be freaking out too, but if this guy actually did the crime, uh, no remorse for me. Starting us off on this list, in at number 10, we have a teenager, Aaron Schmidt, who was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for murdering his 14 year old neighbor, Elena Callahan. If for some reason Schmidt outlived his sentence, he will have an additional five years on his sentence. So that five year sentence will run consecutively after any other sentencing he might receive in the future for a possession charge. He will also have another 10 years of a sentence for theft. And again, that's gonna start after all of his other sentencing has been completed. After sentencing, it was actually appealed to the Georgia Supreme Court due to what in people's opinions were saying, the sentence was cruel and an unusual punishment. But the judge rejected all the arguments in court and said he finds the evidence it was sufficient enough to find Schmidt guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of his crimes and the punishment it fit the crime. Number nine. We have breaking team coverage this evening. One of the brothers accused of murdering his five family members in Broken Arrow will spend the rest of his life in prison. This right here is 16 year old Michael Beaver who with his older brother Robert Beaver killed their parents and three siblings during a murder spree. Is this real life right now? This is just so messed up. So now living a life without his parents, he will see the inside of a prison cell for the rest of his life. Beaver's two younger sisters, one being just five years old, was attacked in what was described as the worst single criminal event in the history of Broken Arrow City in Oklahoma. I mean, that is just so messed up. Beaver was convicted of five counts of first degree murder for his role in the killings. His lawyer did try to defend Michael Beaver saying that it was his older brother that planned and led the murder. His older brother actually he took a plea deal to his crime and he was sentenced to life without parole. By pleading guilty Michael's older brother Robert avoided the death penalty. Michael Beaver was also sentenced. His lawyers couldn't get him off the hook to this traumatizing event. Number eight it is now at the heart of all of today's proceedings was the issue of parole. Judge Edward Luke Meyer, who's presiding over the case, said at the outset that the issue is determining whether White fits in what he called the narrow subset of juveniles who deserve a life sentence without parole. Well, for teenager Dakota White, he fit the narrow subset of juveniles who deserves a life sentence without parole, according to a judge. It seemed like Dakota didn't feel remorse for what he has done during a few recording phone calls of him bragging about his murder that he committed. There didn't seem like a chance of rehabilitating this teenager, so that's when he was given the harsh sentence. During the trial, it only took jurors about 50 15 minutes to come up with the deliberation of guilty. He was found guilty of stabbing and strangling Sam Poss to death. He was just 17 years old at the time of the murder. Number seven, we have 17 years old at the time of his crime, Joseph Spencer. He pleaded guilty to three first degree murder charges and the deaths of his parents, and this is during Labor Day weekend. Joseph went on a killing spree. He was given two life sentences after he was tried as an adult. He will have to serve two life sentences concurrently, so one after another. And then when that's done, he has to serve his third sentence. Spencer's dad was a UPS pilot, his mom was a science teacher, and I'm pretty sure this kid deserves to never see the light of day. Moving into number six, we have 14 year old Colton Glenn Orr. And he was 14 at the time of his crime. He pleaded guilty for shooting and killing his father's fiance, Laura Hendricks, and this took place in their home. He was sentenced to life in prison. Right after the murder took place, the teenager just walked into a police station and he confessed everything he had. Is done. The Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals ruled that Orr should be tried as an adult, so he was given life in prison. Right now there are appeals to try to have this teen tried as a juvenile, but that's most likely going to be denied. Orr's lawyers are trying to argue that sexual abuse that was done to him was the reason that drove him to commit these awful crimes, but that was quickly discredited. At least now he's going to have a very long time to think about what he has done. Number five. Robert, we do begin with breaking news for our viewers in the West. We want to show you these pictures. Aerial shot of a middle school in Noblesville, Indiana. What has become a familiar scene, students appear to be evacuating, running from their own school after reports that there has been a shooter there at Noblesville West Middle School. Hearing about school shootings, it just it really upsets me, and I'm sure it upsets a lot of you guys. It seems way too common. Teens seem to be able to get their hands on guns like way too easily. There has to be some sort of gun control laws that makes it harder for citizens of America to get guns or just even ban them altogether. I know it's a huge debate. There hasn't been a mass shooting in Australia who has banned guns like 20 years ago, but I know it would be close to impossible to ban all guns in America. 
Going back to the story, we have a 13 year old in which his identity, we actually don't know it. He is a minor, so his identity is protected under the law. In which I think it's kind of stupid when you think about it. This teen was capable of committing murder. Why then we're trying to protect him? Well, he will remain in the state's juvenile detention system until he's 18 years old, and then he's gonna be transferred to an adult prison where he's gonna serve out the rest of his sentence. Because he showed no remorse for what he has done, it's likely the teen will never leave prison. Moving into number four, we have Taylor Lane Gualtini, who was just 19 years old when he committed the murder and then he bragged about it. The murder took place in Colorado Springs, where the teen attacked a homeless man with a baseball bat. The homeless man was 55 year old Doyle, who was beaten to death. Doyle was discovered earlier that morning, partially wrapped in a sleeping bag. He had been hit on the head at least four to seven times. During the trial, a seven man, five woman jury took just two hours to convict him. The hearing trial did take three weeks, so the jury had to listen in on to some pretty horrifying details about the crime. Well, the teen was convicted of the murder and he was sentenced to life in prison and he showed absolutely no remorse for what he has done. He bragged to 16 people about the murder. Well, at least he is now living in the right place for the rest of his life. Next up, number three, we have 17 year old Gavin Ramsey, who was just found guilty of four counts of aggravated murder, two counts of murder, one count of aggravated burglary, one count of kidnapping, and one count of gross abuse of a corpse. Is this real life right now? What does that even mean? Gross abuse of a corpse. Let, let's not think about it. Well, Ramsey killed 98 year old Margaret Douglas, which is just so sickening. I mean, poor woman who lived so long only to be murdered. This kid is just sick. A sentence tonight for the Medina County teenager who broke into the home of a 98 year old woman, videotaped her sleeping before killing her and abusing her body. Ramsey was given life in prison. He left in chains where he'll remain for life, life without parole for the teenager who robbed a 98 year old from reaching her dream of 100. Moving into number two. The court having duly considered your offenses, it is hereby ordered that you be committed to the Department of Youth Services until the age of 21 and furthermore committed to the Massachusetts Correctional Institution at Cedar Junction for the period of not less than 25 years. So that was Philip Chisholm at the age of 14 years old. He was found guilty on many charges. He raped and killed his 24 year old math teacher. Chisholm was ordered to serve life in prison without the possibility of parole. He started his sentence at a juvenile facility. Once he turns 21 years old, he's then gonna be transferred to a maximum adult prison where he will serve out the rest of his sentence. Chisholm was found guilty on many charges. He was sentenced to 25 years for premeditated murder. Once that sentence is complete, he will then have to serve another sentence of 40 years for armed robbery. Once that sentence is complete, so that's about 65 years at this point, he's going to have another 40 year sentence for armed robbery. After he's done that, he's going to have another 40 year sentence. And it's not done yet. After that sentence, if this teen is still alive at the age of 79 years old, he's going to have to serve his last sentence of rape. So that is another 40 years. This teen will have to become the world's oldest person to be able to be released from prison at the age of 119 years old. Finally, number one, we have 10 year old Antonio Barbo who was charged with killing his great grandmother in her Wisconsin home. He also had a friend help with the murder. Barbo and his friend decided to try to steal money from 78 year old Barbara Olson, but things took a turn and a robbery, it turned into a murder scene. They took turns beating her with a hatchet and hammer. Sentencing was held today for a teenager convicted in a crime that rattled Sheboygan County and fiercely divided a family. Antonio Barbo learned he'll be a middle-aged man before he gets a chance at parole for killing his great-grandmother. There doesn't seem to be much remorse, so I'm not sure if this kid will ever get out of prison. After Barbo and his friend committed the murder, they actually decided to go out and uh, enjoy some pizza. These are not behaviors of remorse. Barbo's attorney was shocked when Barbo was given a life sentence. He believes that kids, especially at the age of just 10 years old, shouldn't be given a life sentence. But you know what? If you're capable of doing the crime, then I think you should be old enough, you know, and capable enough to do the time. Our statutes the way they're standing right now, 10 year old facing life in prison I don't understand that. 
They aren't adults, they're children. Starting us off with number 10 are Catherine and Curtis Fairchild Jones. In Melbourne 1999, at 13 and 12 years old, Catherine and Curtis became the youngest people ever charged as adults for first degree murder. The two shot their father's girlfriend Sonia and had plans to murder their father as well and another male relative for sexually molesting them. As soon as they had shot her, they realized what a huge mistake they'd made and they ran to their neighbor's house and said it was an accident. Even after evidence of abuse was found, no one did anything. No one believed the two were being abused and they were sent to jail. During their trial, they never brought up the abuse. Nothing about what they had endured was even mentioned. I mean, the man who was abusing them was convicted of sexually assaulting his girlfriend's daughter years prior. Why was this not brought up by their defense during their trial? I have no idea. Then the justice system failed them and they pleaded guilty to second degree murder and were sentenced to 18 years in probation for life. They were both released in 2015 at 29 and 30 years old. That's basically your whole prime part of life all spent in jail. Coming in at number 9 is Artif Rafe and Sebastian Burns. Funnily enough, I knew about this case beforehand because it's a very good Netflix docuseries about different crimes and it's called The Confession Tapes and this was that first case that I actually explored. Highly recommend but Anyway, in Bellevue back in 1994, Arthur and his best friend Sebastian came back to Arthur's family's house for the holidays. All was well until the boys came back from a long night out to discover Arthur's parents and sister brutally murdered and his house a complete mess. After their murder, Arthur inherited basically everything his parents had, buying a new car, living a new lifestyle and seemingly not mourning the loss of his family at all. Police in both the US and Canada suspected the two boys of killing his family in order to get their money. They slandered them in the news like there was no tomorrow, branded them as murderers and then using the Mr. Big technique to extract a confession from them. This technique is actually illegal in the US but legal in Canada where it was done. It involves undercover cops gaining the suspects trust by involving them in illegal activities and then getting them to confess. Even with multiple alibis and no physical evidence, the undercover cop kept probing Burns to confess and he would make it all go away. Away. I'm assuming in the hopes of making his life go back to normal, Burns did confess and later on so did Arthur even though their stories were completely different. Both were found guilty in 2004 of a triple murder and were both sentenced to three life sentences each even though they've been in prison for the past 20 years. At first I thought how could anyone murder their parents but after doing this video and seeing how many people actually did I was like wow this, this is a thing, this actually happens. At number 8 is Joshua Smith. Now in February of 2012, 14 year old Joshua broke into his stepfather Chico's room and stole his shotgun. Right after that, he started shooting things around the house and Chico and his daughter were able to escape his rampage by breaking a window and climbing through. Joshua's mother, Tamiko Robinson, was sleeping on the sofa when he shot her around 12 to 14 times at close range. And why did he do this, you may be wondering? Because his mother was being a mother. That's right, Joshua started hanging out with the wrong crowd and wanted to join a gang, do drugs, pop pills. He started coming home at ridiculous hours, so Tamiko gave him a curfew and told him to stop hanging out with these people, and that's what triggered him. He pled guilty to second degree murder and will be in jail for anywhere from 30 to 50 years. Filling our number 7 slot now is Evan Miller. Now, Evan's life was hard enough. By the time he turned 14 in 2003, he'd been in and out of foster care due to his stepfather continuously beating him and his mother abusing drugs and alcohol. One day he was hanging out with his friends and his neighbour Cannon who also happened to be one of his mum's drug dealers. After spending most of the night drinking and smoking weed, Evan and his friends attempted to rob Cannon after beating him. Evan beat him with a baseball bat and then set his trailer on fire and he later died from his injuries and smoke inhalation. When brought to trial, his friend was offered life with a chance of parole if he testified against Evan which obviously he did. In 2006, Evan was sentenced to life without parole and now at 28 years old, he may have a chance at a retrial but for now he's still very much in prison. Now at number 6 is Jacob P. Ind. Back in 1992 when Jacob was 15, 
16 years old, he killed his mom and his stepdad. After enduring years of sexual, physical, and emotional abuse, Jacob hired another older teen to help him murder his parents. Then, in the morning of December 17th, they went to their bedroom where they were fast asleep and attacked them for five whole minutes using various gruesome methods, stabbing them, spraying their faces with bear mace, and shooting them as well. He never testified during his first trial since his defense told him he would pack up and leave if he tried, so he was sentenced to life without parole. After spending 25 years in prison, he was finally granted a retrial and the right to testify back in August of 2018. And his retrial hasn't happened yet, so we don't know the conviction as of yet. Coming at number 5 is Diana Ortiz. Diana was 18 years old when she moved to New York in 1983 to flee an abusive relationship, and that's where she eventually met her new boyfriend who was double her age. The man introduced her to drugs like heroin, LSD, and cocaine, and convinced that the only way to sustain both their habits was to stage a robbery. Note, not a murder, just a robbery. The plan was sorted. She would pose as a prostitute in a parking lot, wait for someone to approach her, and then her boyfriend and some friends would rob him. However, on the actual day, the victim that pulled up to her started fighting with the men, and a brawl ensued and he was eventually shot. While they all ran off in separate directions, what they had no clue about was that the customer was actually an off-duty police officer, and he actually died a few days later. Diana turned herself in and was convicted of felony murder, and was sentenced to 17 years to life. And after 22 and a half years in prison, she finally went on parole. Imagine 22 and a half years in prison, I'm only 21 right now, and I feel like I lived a long life. That's my life, and then some all in prison. I can't, I can't even imagine that. At number 4 is Quantel Lotz. Now Lotz, like a lot of other kids on this list, had a troubled upbringing. His dad, mum, stepmom, uncles, aunts, basically everyone around him was addicted to cocaine, even getting high on it while he was still in the room at a very young age. He'd seen his uncle get shot multiple times because of drugs, and he himself was beaten on a regular basis. By 14, he used to have bouts of getting very angry, then crying uncontrollably, and then amnesia about what happened. In 1999, he was play fighting with his stepbrother Michael. It started off innocently, as it always does. Michael sent a blow dart his way, Lots fired back with a toy bow and arrow, but then it turned very ugly and escalated into a proper fight. It ended with Lots stabbing Michael a few times and then ultimately killing him. He literally doesn't remember the incident whatsoever. He just remembers being told the next day that his brother was dead and he was the reason. He was tried as an adult, not a juvenile, and was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Even though at 14 the state of Missouri thinks you're too young to legally get married, leave school, donate blood, get a tattoo without parental approval, yet you're old enough to be tried as an adult and then put away in jail forever. Filling in our number 3 slot is John Catus. Back in 2009, John was 16 at the time when he put up an ad on Craig list offering sexual services in exchange for money, and the very popular ABC reporter George Webber replied to his ad. When they finally met up for this kinky hookup, if we can call it that, John claimed that George pulled a knife on him and as self defense he stabbed George 50 times. Mind you, George was bound and being choked when this happens, so I don't know how he could have even pulled a knife out to begin with. And if it was really self defense, why 50 times? Surely someone's dead after maybe a few, or at least injured enough for you to escape the situation. During his hearings and his confession tapes, you can see him literally wink and smile throughout. At 18 years old, John was found guilty and was sentenced to 25 years to life, and at 28 years old, he's still in prison today. Now at number 2 is Ashley Jones. Ashley was a problem child raised by problematic parents. Her stepdad used to sexually molest her, and her mum was a drug addict, so it appeared to be a blessing when her grandparents agreed to take in her and her sister. I don't know if they agreed to take her in or her parents kicked her out since she stabbed both her dad and her pregnant mum a year beforehand. Luckily neither died. A year later, at 14 years old, she was disobeying her grandparents more and more and she was dating a boy they didn't approve of. The couple hatched a plan and she helped her boyfriend commit a series of murders. First they killed her granddad, shooting him twice in the face and then stabbing him to death. Then her aunt who they shot in her sleep and then set them both on fire. They also attacked her grandmum who also got burned on the face, stabbed in the chest and jaw and shot in the shoulder. Luckily she survived and she also tried to kill her own 10 year old sister by stabbing her 14 times, but she also survived, thank god. Now at 24 years old, she's still in prison, 
serving out her life sentence. And finally, at number one is Erin Caffey. Way back in March of 2008, Erin started dating a boy called Charlie Wilkinson. Story seems pretty kosher so far. After meeting Charlie, her parents felt like there was something off about him but didn't worry too much, but then Erin started to change. Her interests changed, her demeanor changed, and her parents thought Charlie was a bad influence and wanted them to break up. So what do any desperate teenagers do in that situation? Hatch a plan. Charlie and his friend Wade went into Erin's house while she waited in the car with Wade's girlfriend and shot Erin's mother Penny whilst also nearly decapitating her with a katana. They then shot her youngest brother Matthew in the head while James and his friend both took turns stabbing her other brother Tyler. As if that wasn't bad enough, they then set the house on fire and it was completely ruined. Erin's father was also really badly injured, they shot him nearly 11 times whilst they killed Penny but luckily he survived and was able to escape the house before it completely went up in flames. I mean I don't know how lucky that is considering he survived his wife and kids and his remaining child is in jail but it's still a good sign. Initially no one has suspected Erin but during Charlie and Wade's questionings they both said that the murders were Erin's idea. At 17 years old Erin pleaded guilty to murder as did Charlie and they were both given two consecutive life sentences plus 25 years. 